Red Valley is podcasting perfection. Created by Jonathan Williams and Alan Mandel, Red Valley is a science fiction drama podcast about two men diving into the conspiracy surrounding the Red Valley Seed Vault, which is supposedly an unethical research facility for cryonic preservation. You know, like Walt Disney's frozen head. Disney. I swear to God, if you say anything about Walt Disney's frozen fucking head, I'm hanging up this phone right now. It's about unethical science, the past and the future, and also the hidden cheat codes for Sonic the Hedgehog 2. I listened to this whole podcast in the span of about a week. I spent a few months in a bit of a hyperfixation drought and was going through podcast after podcast, trying to find something that really scratched that itch for me. But I never found anything that I was completely satisfied with. So let me tell you, it is refreshing to find something so full of heart and good quality writing. I'm not kidding you, this podcast was so satisfying to listen to that it finally pushed me to give video essays a shot. I've been wanting to do this for like, years, so thanks Red Valley crew. I'm gonna give my thoughts on this podcast, both with and without spoilers, because I just had so much fun with the show that I'll take any excuse to talk about it. I don't know if it's a review really, I don't really bring up a lot of flaws in the show and no media is without its critiques, but I just wanted to ramble about the things that I enjoyed about it, and hopefully you enjoy it too. I also ask you to forgive the very minimal editing here. This little thing I'm going to do, Art and Essays, is mostly going to consist of me writing essays about things and then using speed paint footage as b-roll. Right now, I'm using a speed paint of a page for my webcomic, Tip the Ferryman, which you can check out in the description below. Plugging aside, let's begin! Uh, before we proceed though, I'd like to give a few content warnings. Red Valley is a podcast that deals with serious topics such as domestic abuse, CSA, medical trauma, self-harm, mental health, and has frequent depictions of blood and occasional gore. Please proceed for this video and the podcast itself with caution. Do you want to continue? So let's talk about the basics. The two main characters you'll be spending most of your time with, and the only ones I can say anything about without massively spoiling the season 1 twist, are Warren Godby and Gordon Pollock. Warren has just started his job at Overhead. It's a company that owns... basically everything? He's an accountant who has to make sure they're not wasting company money on projects that go nowhere. This leads to him trying to track down the Red Valley Seed Vault, this wild goose chase bringing him right at the feet of Gordon Pollock. Gordon's an archivist for Overhead and a bit of a conspiracy nut, immediately instructing Warren to record all of their conversations and keep them 100% secret. Turns out Gordon's been following the trail of the Red Valley Seed Vault for quite some time and believes that the seeds they're preserving are actually cryogenically frozen human bodies. Together, they set off to solve the mystery behind the supposed Seed Vault and discover some things about their own past along the way. Gordon and Warren's personalities work off of each other extremely well. Gordon's an eager, if incredibly awkward nerd who's just happy to have someone to info dump to about all of this. Warren's a bit less energetic. Ever prone to pettiness, he's sarcastic and nervous. He's usually described as pretty skinny and meek by most characters in the podcast. Once the two start bonding, they bring out the best in each other. Seriously, there's an entire scene dedicated to just them talking about Sonic the Hedgehog 2 cheat codes, and it's incredible. And that's something I love about this podcast a lot. It remembers to spend time with its characters. That Sonic the Hedgehog 2 scene, yeah, that probably sounds pointless without any details, but there's so much more discussed in that scene, and the most important part of it is the character interactions. We learn a lot more about the two of them and see them bond over a shared interest. I've seen some people complain that this show has a lot of filler, but that's just not true. Every seemingly pointless conversation Warren and Gordon have, or every mundane interaction we hear Warren have with his wife, or argument with some guy working at a cafeteria, adds to characterization. We spend time learning about these characters and thus grow to care about them, making it hit much harder when they fail and being way more satisfying when, despite it all, they succeed. You hear the phrase, if it doesn't progress the plot, toss it out, thrown around a lot. I hate this, because it ignores a crucial part of storytelling. The characters. So I'd like to make an addendum to this phrase. That being, if it doesn't progress the plot or the characters, which are often entwined together, but people really get that confused and say, oh, if it's not plot details, then it's not, it's not plot progression, it's filler. 
Okay, let me restart. I'm bitching about... <laughs> I'm bitching about that. As I was saying, if it doesn't progress the plot or the characters, throw it out. Not everything has to be a lore info dump 24-7, and Red Valley understands that. It understands how to slow down and let us appreciate the good times. Plus, it's just really fucking funny. I don't want to spoil too many of the jokes, but genuinely, it's got a great sense of humor. That clip about Walt Disney from earlier? Yeah, that's how the show starts. That's literally the opening scene. Plus, it's just the little things. Like, they have this Amazon Alexa in-universe equivalent called a Blue Sky. There's this really funny bit where a character says Blue Sky while on the phone with Gordon, and you hear the Blue Sky boot up and ask, How can I help you? faintly in the background. It's great. Oh, and I'll talk about this more later, but there's a character who I genuinely thought I was going to be really annoyed by. His style of humor usually makes me roll my eyes, but the writers do something really clever but simple with this that makes him weirdly lovable to me. I'll talk about him more in the spoilers section. What I'm saying is, this show knows how to make you care about these characters, and it knows how to make you laugh. That way it can make you cry and feel complete and utter fucking dread later on! I know I didn't discuss much plot here, but that's mostly because it's pretty difficult to, both because it's spoilers and because Red Valley is an extremely character-driven show. The plot's pretty simple without all the character details. There's a science facility, they research cryogenics, cryonics technically, the head scientist is unethical and evil as hell, there's an ongoing effort to stop it all... That's... that's just it. Which might be a bit of a letdown to some people, but I don't mind it, honestly. I'm not the biggest sci-fi guy around, so to me, the focus on the characters feels a lot more grounded and interesting. So, if you're looking for a simple sci-fi story with large focuses on character drama and a great sense of humor, give Red Valley a shot. It currently consists of Season 1, the miniseries While You Were Hypersleeping, Season 2, and the miniseries Live and Let Clive. Season 3 is currently in production at the time of me writing this video, don't skip those miniseries, by the way. Watch them in order that they're uploaded. They're important. I, I almost skipped them the first time around that I like listened to this, and it, it was it, it was not good. It was not good, Chief. I, I I should not have done that. It's a short show that you can finish in about a day or two, each season only having eight episodes or less. Give it a shot, and do mind the content warnings, of course. Now, we're about to get into spoiler territory, so if you haven't listened to this show yet, I urge you to right now. It's more fun if you go in completely blind. Seriously, that season one twist is going to absolutely floor you. Go on, I'll, I'll go. I'll give you a second. Just g go ahead. All good. We ready to go? Good, because the spoiler section is going to be written entirely for people who have seen the show. So there's going to be a lot of stuff that doesn't make sense if you haven't seen it, because I'm not going to explain everything. Now, let's continue. So, that season one twist, huh? I remember actually being pretty caught off guard by it on the first listen through, Warren being the only surviving test subject of Red Valley's experiments, I mean. The podcast, like I said before, is pretty short and this twist gets revealed in episode 6, so it felt a little out of left field to me. But that was because I listened to this at work, so I wasn't paying much attention. Upon re-listening, there's so much more foreshadowing that leads up to this. This could be because of hindsight, so I don't know, maybe it's a problem, maybe it's not. But regardless, I do think the twist is set up pretty well. Like, here's a few things I noticed on re-listen. Karen, Warren's fake wife who is actually Dr. Brienne Helbeck, is the one constantly insisting Warren take the pills he was prescribed to keep him healthy after he first emerged from his cryopod, passing them off as psychiatric drugs. She seems disappointed when Warren mentions animal experimentations being illegal, which she plays off as a joke, but it hints more towards her the end justifies the means mindset when it comes to science. I'd also love to add the small detail that the animal they were discussing here was rabbits, and Warren's name literally means rabbit's den. Clive Schill is the one who tries to shoo Gordon away from Warren, plus that thing Warren's sister says to him, you should only do what you know you can live with, gets repeated by that anonymous test subject that Aubrey Woods interviewed. Clive gets name dropped in episode 2 of season 1, apparently in connection with the seed vault, which Clive brushes off as some farming thing. He also takes a long pause when Warren asks about cryonic research. In that same phone call, he also calls Warren the next big thing, which makes sense because Clive later goes on to just see Warren as one big cash cow. It's brilliant! This does foreshadowing, build up, and pay off so unbelievably well. There's not a single thing that gets mentioned that goes overlooked. A few more examples, I can't fit them all here because of the sheer amount of them is... insane, but I need to go off about this. 
One, we see Aubrey's van out in the snow twice before we figure out who's in it. Once it's just some distant car noises, and then she almost runs Gordon the hell over. Two, Aubrey calls herself an idiot in the snow, and later, when holding himself hostage against the Red Valley scientist on advice from Aubrey, Warren says, without me, you're all just idiots in the snow. It's not necessarily foreshadowing, just a bit of writing that I enjoyed. 3. That Malcolm guy that Gordon talks about in While You Were Hypersleeping 2 and how he doesn't really get his motivations? Guess what? He shows up in Season 2, Episode 7, and we learn his motivations. He's a greedy rich man who wants to live forever, and he thinks cryogenics is the key to that. Number 4. There is a literal Chekhov's gun. An actual Chekhov's gun. Yeah, that gun Brienne randomly mentions having a safe in Season 2, Episode 4, it's the same one she shoots Gordon and Clive with in the season finale. It's a Chekhov's gun! That's so fucking good! Ah, oh, this podcast is incredible. I'm gonna fucking- I'm gonna kill over death. I'm gonna die. I'm gonna- Hey, I'm, I'm gonna die! That's not even getting into the build-up Season 2 has with the whole Warren and Gordon have been cryogenically frozen for 40 years and Aubrey is trying to save them thing. They set it up immediately and slowly trickle information out to you at the beginning and or end of every Season 2 episode. And it makes you feel really smart when you get to go, I knew it! I knew Gordon was frozen too! It's fantastic. Just how cohesive everything feels in this podcast. It's just at my fucking brain. It's so good. I haven't even talked about the main antagonists, Clive and Briony, and that incredible penultimate episode of season two. I'll talk about Clive first because I have so many thoughts on Briony. Clive is a character I thought I'd find really, really annoying. But Red Valley really makes Clive work, and that's entirely because all the other characters know he's pathetic, and he does too on some level. He gets knocked down a peg too, but I'll talk about that a bit more later. It makes it a bit easier to laugh at his absurd threats and even find him a bit likable. I think it helps also that he's canonically married and has a daughter, like... <laughs> Like, like, how did, how did that, how did that happen? That, that's fucking hilarious. I, I hope they're both freaks and living in domestic bliss. I love that for him. And then there's Dr. Brienne Helbeck. Oh my god, Dr. Brienne Helbeck. She's great. She's got this cold exterior that occasionally cracks when her genuine enthusiasm for her field of study breaks through. She's absolutely ruthless, too, doing whatever she can to get to the answers that she wants believing that she is ultimately doing good in the world. If I had to tell anyone how to properly write a the ends justifies the means character, I'd immediately direct them to Dr. Halbeck. I mean, she pretends to be a guy's wife for a year and then psychologically tortures him for research. That's insane. She's insane. I love her for it. Oh my god, girl boss, I support women's wrongs. Why did I say that? I love how human she feels despite it all though. A lot of it is lifted up by the fact that she tries to relate herself to Gordon. They're both people who aren't very good with others. They have a fascination with something really taboo and don't get to show enthusiasm for that topic out of fear of judgment or ridicule. She tries to imply Gordon is like her, but she's far from correct. Dr. Halbeck copes with that fear of judgment by hiding her enthusiasm for her field, instead channeling that energy into unstoppable commitment and determination no matter who it hurts. Gordon, on the other hand, expresses his enthusiasm with the people he feels safest with, most notably Warren and, in the past, Aubrey, and doesn't think his fascination should lead to real harm of other living people. It's a fantastic parallel, and I love the way that Red Valley explores this. And God, God, Season 2, Episode 7, it's show-stopping. After revealing to Warren that he'd killed a man, Brienne is forced by Clive to attend a meeting with the head of, well, Overhead, to prove their project is a success to him. Brienne spends this meeting tearing Clive to shreds in front of their boss, displaying every last insecurity of his and berating him for rushing the project when thus far they'd only had one success out of hundreds. She believes she's taking control here, making demands for more people and more funding. And for a second, you think Malcolm is going to hand it over to her. She always gets what she wants. She's so forceful with her words. She feels so powerful in this scene. It's terrifying. But no, they reject her. 
She gets torn into for being so ruthless and uncaring towards their test subjects. Even Overhead isn't willing to overlook that. Clive is pathetic, sure, but she's cruel. Not only does her proposal get rejected, she gets fucking fired. Then and there, her whole house of cards just topples in seconds. This is genuinely one of my favorite villain takedown scenes I've ever listened to. It's so, so satisfying to finally hear Clive and Brienne get torn into and exposed for what they really are. It's not even the end, either. Remember, after this, Brienne goes on a killing spree and fucking shoots Gordon and Clive. Then she runs off with whatever research she can get her hands on. All while Aubrey is trying to blow this place to smithereens and save Gordon and Warren's lives, it's fantastic. What I'm saying is this. Red Valley is satisfying. It's funny, and it's a damn good story with a lot of heart put into it. There's a lot of moments that made me sit and think, I know how that feels. Like, if I can get serious for a moment. I won't get too into this because it's pretty heavy and, well, I mean, I value my privacy, but just like Warren, I have PTSD. Granted, they're for very different reasons if my theories about Warren are correct, but still. There's a moment in season two where Brienne mocks Warren for getting this wide-eyed stare and breathing heavily when he gets triggered. And that hits so fucking hard. I've done that before. It's something I've done thinking it'll keep me safe. PTSD makes you feel like a cornered animal, even if you're alone in your room and you're completely safe. So you behave like one. I recognize myself in Warren when he disassociates. It hits so hard when he talks about liking being in the cryopod because he doesn't have to think about all the awful things that have happened to him or that he's done. He can just be without being anything. It's so well handled, and the time they take to explain his condition to you doesn't feel at all condescending. Especially since the actual physical science behind PTSD is important to how Warren survived being in stasis for so long. I don't know if any of the Red Valley crew are watching this, and honestly I'm probably being a little hopeful in thinking that they are, but if they are, I just wanted to say thank you. I, I don't see people like me in media a lot, and when I do, it's usually war veterans or people who don't get a lot of happy endings, most of the time both. Which isn't to invalidate veterans with PTSD, obviously not, but it's a stereotype with PTSD to the point where many people believe it's a mental condition exclusive to trauma sustained in war. Victims of abuse or horrific accidents or so many other things often get ignored in discussions surrounding PTSD, so it's just... It's rare. It's very rare to see a normal, everyday person in media, like me, who has PTSD, and for it to be rewritten this fucking well, with so much love and care put into it. Well, as normal as you can get if you've been in cryostasis for 40 years, but this podcast is so tightly written and has amazing characters, humor, and incredible foreshadowing and payoff. There's a lot I didn't get to here, mostly because I don't know a lot about audio editing or voice acting, so I feel like I can't properly critique it one way or another, but every character's voice actor here does a great job. I like the performances and they feel very real, especially when Warren and Gordon are just bantering about dumb BS. It's delightful. I'm incredibly excited for season 3, and I know it's going to be just as amazing as the rest of the show. Red Valley, in my opinion, is podcasting perfection. And if for some reason you sat through the spoiler section despite not seeing the show, I hope this little video gave you a damn good reason to go watch it. Seriously, you can finish it in a day or two. Give it a shot. Please, I, I'm, I'm on my knees begging you. Someone needs to listen to me overanalyze Warren's character. Please, God! But that's all for now. I'm pretty new to doing video essays on my own, so uh, I hope this was good. You can follow me on Tumblr, Pillowfort, or Inkblot.art. Uh, we're, we're in a social media meltdown right now. What, what do you want from me? I, I'm kind of hoping these places work out. I like them a lot. Um, and hey... If you're into character-driven spooky stories, maybe check out my webcomic, Tip the Ferryman. It's about ghost hunters, identity crises, and cool powers that you get from being yourself. 
Links are in the description. I feel like since this is my first video, I'm legally required to say don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And, uh, yeah. Have a nice day.